One of the stars of the 2020 or 2021 Olympics in Tokyo was the brand new sport of skateboarding. Everybody was hooked to their screens watching this great sport finally make its Olympic debut. And one of the stars of that sport is on the line today. She finished fifth in the women's park. And before the Olympics, esteemed career, Australia's number one female skateboarder, number five in the world, if you don't mind, world champion, X Games medalist. She has done it all. Movie star and now author. So all the things are being ticked off the list here. It's an absolute honour to be able to welcome to Off the Podium, Poppy Star Olsen. Poppy, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you on Off the Podium today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> it's, it's exciting times because you're our first ever skateboarder on Off the Podium that we've been able to talk to. So uh, that's always exciting. But going through that resume, I mean, author, movie star, that sounds pretty good. Uh, <laughs> you know, you've had documentaries made after you and now now an author. Uh, it's exciting times to be poppy, I can imagine. Yeah, it's it's been a really busy year, or oh, just a couple of years in general. It's It's been super fun. I've been allowed to, I, I guess, express my creativity in a, in a bunch of different ways. So I've kind of been keeping busy, but having a lot of fun at the same time. That's the main thing, which I, I've seen so many of your interviews and, and read a lot about you in the lead up to this interview. And, and one thing that I saw in one of your interviews about sort of a dream that you would love to always be an Olympian. But of course, when you were younger, skateboarding wasn't an Olympic sport. It's only sort of been something that has come about in the, in the last, uh, you know, five or six years. So before we get to sort of your skateboarding career, what other sports did you sort of play when you were growing up? And did you have sort of a specific sport that maybe you thought if you could be an Olympian, that there would be one you'd like to go towards? Uh, I always grew up watching uh, swimming because my mom was a big swimmer and we kind of like our whole family was pretty, pretty into swimming. So I grew up watching the swimming thought maybe at, it'd be fun to do that. Um, but then I played um, rugby union for a while up until I was like 14 and that was super fun. But then my mom made me actually pick between rugby and skateboarding because uh. she knew I'd get like hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. So rugby, she thought you'd get hurt. Skateboarding, she thought you'd be okay at. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she was kind of just like, pick. I got invited to my first um, competition overseas. And then she was kind of like, you know, you have to pick, you should probably pick between rugby and skateboarding because they're both going to take up a lot of time. And, you know, if you keep playing rugby, it would suck to spend all this money on a plane ticket and then you get hurt like right before or something. Yeah, wow, that, that's incredible. Because you, you got your first skateboard, I believe, when you were eight, given to you by a family friend, if I'm not mistaken. How, how does that come about like hey poppy got your present and uh, was this something that as soon as you put your feet on it you just absolutely fell in love with it yeah pretty much i it was my um my neighbor at the time my neighbor's boyfriend and we just kind of saw him on our walk home we we're walking back from the beach or something and he had a skateboard and it was a huge skateboard and i just asked if i could have a go and i just i loved it so much and when i went to give it back to him he said that I could have it. So that was, that was kind of the start of it all pretty much. <laughs> nice. I, I kind of like that, that, you know, you just want to keep a hold of it. Now, what was it that you just loved about it? Was it just kind of the feeling of being on the board, the, the freedom, kind of like all of the above? I think there was so many different things that I liked about it. I, at the start, I kind of liked, I guess, doing something that um, I guess, wasn't really seen as a girl's thing to do. I like to push the boundaries a little bit and just do whatever I wanted, whether it was rugby union or skating or anything like that. And I also like that it was, it was so creative. There's no rules and like, you don't have to like swim in a straight line or you kind of just can skate however you want and learn whatever tricks you want. And there's no rules. Um, so there was lots of different parts of it that I liked and I liked that it you scared yourself almost every time you skated too and you had to challenge yourself. It's something that I think we all try, right, on the skateboard. I mean, my times of sitting on a well, standing on a skateboard, probably better off sitting on them to be honest. You know, you'd get on and I'd fall quickly off it and go, No, nah, that's not for me. But it's it's always 
that sort of level of freedom you're talking about and that that creativity, but then it's the culture of it as well, of course, when you sort of get involved in it. Because it's not exactly a sport in which you get on a board and you automatically think Olympics. Obviously, at that time, it wasn't a thing, but even competing, whereas swimming, you get in the pool, you're probably doing that for competing. Whereas skateboarding, I guess it's a certain point where you go, I'm okay at this, maybe I can go to some competitions and take this a little bit further. Yeah, I think it... That's an, another part that's really cool about skateboarding is because it can be anything you want it to be. I guess when I, even when I first started skating, I didn't really necessarily think of it as a sport because it, it, it's such a lifestyle and a hobby and I was so passionate about it and I think because there are no rules either. And skateboarding is really cool in a sense where you can it can be whatever you want it to be and you can do whatever you want to do. You can just skate for fun with your friends. Um, and I think that's why the community, the community was definitely a really big part for me. Um, like once I started like getting a bit better, I realized how, I guess, friendly and welcoming everyone is. I think when my parents first started taking me to the skate park, they had this kind of like idea of what skate parks would be like and what the people would be like there but everyone's there because they love skating and were so welcoming and nice and yeah it, it is that sort of stigma isn't it all oh, the kids at the skate park like it's obviously you know got that negativity about it but i mean just fast forwarding a little bit have you found that since skateboarding has been added to the olympics that that's changing a lot more now that there isn't necessarily always that negativity around what skateboarding and the skate park might bring to some people yeah, I think it's it's definitely changing. I mean, I kind of I I don't even mind that part of it like kind of growing up and going skating and you know, you have like judgments or older people kind of like, "Oh, get out of my way." sort of thing. I didn't even mind that part of it because it was kind of like this skateboarding sort of like this misfit thing that like weird the weird and wonderful people can come together and do this amazing thing, which was kind of awesome. But I think definitely since it being included into the Olympics, it's made a lot of, it's turned a lot of eyes and people kind of see it really differently now. And they're like, whoa, this, I don't know, all these little kids that, and people that are doing this thing, you can actually go to the Olympics for it, I think. I you obviously became a, a world champion in uh, 2014 uh, in the over 14 age group, which is, which is outstanding to think that that happens. I mean, from the age of eight to 14, that progression. And what, how old were you when you actually went into your first actual competition? Um, I went into my first competition when I was nine. Wow. And so, yeah, I started skating when I was eight. And I went in my first one when I was nine. It was just like a little competition and there were only like three girls there um but I ended up winning it I couldn't do many tricks at all and I was so nervous to go in it um I was like oh I can't really do much but after like winning that it was like this boost of confidence kind of thing kind of give that taste and flavor for it which on the trick side of things you get on the board when you're eight at what stage, I mean, are you doing tricks straight away? Is it a case of, okay, I'm balanced now, let's try a trick. And then is it just a progression side of things? I've done one trick, let's try the other one. Because I can imagine there's always that thirst to want to do the next trick and get better at it so you can do that, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's a, another reason why I like skating so much is because there are so many tricks you can learn. And it's not like you have to do this or you have to follow this set path of what people are doing. It's such a creative thing to do. And uh, like every single skateboarder has their own style, which makes it so unique and so fun to watch. Um, but yeah, you definitely, when you start like getting the feel of a trick or even like watching skate videos at home when it's raining and you can't skate and you see other people do things and you get inspiration, like, when I learn a new trick, it's just, it's kind of like the best feeling ever, especially when you do it and it feels really good. So yeah, there's always wanting to learn new things. With that creativity side of it, when it particularly comes to a competition, are the judges looking at specific tricks that obviously have names and they can tell, or is there a level of freedom where you can create something completely new that they've never seen before? 
I think it's it's pretty hard these days to do like new tricks in comps and stuff because a lot of it's been like created or in, invented already by other skaters. Um, but definitely there's when there's people judging skate comps and it, it'll be like a, a line of a bunch of skateboarders and everyone, you know, you're marked on so many different things. It's It's not like other sports where it's kind of like you just keep a tally of goals or you know you're timing a race or something skating is is so unique and you're judged on you know style the height of your air the difficulty of tricks how well you use the entire course things like that um so that's a really that's another really cool aspect of it and you can't just like no one not just any person can judge a skating comp which is pretty cool it has to be kind of skaters that are pretty recognized and have have been in it for a little bit to understand you know what's going on i think you, you mentioned that your first comp there are only three girls basically in that i mean when you're making your way through the ranks i mean you're the very first australian female to compete uh, at a at a summer x games as well so have you seen progression now as well with with women in the sport sort of increasing given the status of the sport now or are we still at a point where we need more girls we need to get some more girls out there getting on skateboards to uh, increase the numbers yeah i mean it's it's growing so much every day um when I first started skating at Bondi Beach in um, Sydney, I was I was the only local girl for about three years, and then other people started popping up, um, other girls, and you kind of just like get on with it. I think when I when I was starting out, and but then once like other girls started popping up, I realized how fun it was, and definitely since I've started skating and now since with the introduction of the Olympics, I mean the skateboarding into the Olympics, it's it's grown so much already. I think like a lot of like young girls like seeing that it is the girls are so incredible at skateboarding and being out to watch that has kind of just been. I don't know, a confidence boost, but definitely, definitely seeing more girls. Like every time I go to a skate park now, there's, you know, at least a couple of girls, whereas before there would be none sort of thing. My, my introduction to skateboarding, weirdly enough, as a kid was through my sister. My sister skated and she's four years older than me. And I think when she started doing it, I was like, okay, what's this? It's cool. And then some of her friends did it. And then from there, of course, you bring on Tony Hawk, Pro Skater, all these kind of great things you see. But it's always interesting to me to think that my my very first introduction was that through my sister. And she, I think she picked it up from a a female friend as well. So um, it's, it's obviously something that girls have always done. Uh, And obviously with a different level of exposure now that it's got, but uh, obviously I guess in that, world where it was kind of always perceived mainly as sort of dominated by the men right yeah and that's i kind of grew up thinking that and you know it's definitely like intimidating um being a female or being a young girl and kind of wanting to do a sport and not seeing anyone like you around um so it it was yeah it definitely was a bit like that and every I would see like some girls occasionally and that would be so cool because you'd think oh there's people like me out here doing it but it definitely is intimidating so it's really cool that all um all these young kids and girl skaters have so many more people to look up to now and you know I guess they would get a sense of inclusivity or something or just like seeing people like you would make it much more welcoming or less intimidating i think in terms of the olympic disciplines we've obviously got street and park your park do you decide when you are competing and you're progressing through one or the other can you do both like i mean sort of how does that work when it comes to competitive skateboarding um it's kind i think there's a lot of people that that love to skate both um you know and out like outside of the competition world, I'm I'm always trying to skate straight. I'm not very good at it, but I think when you're younger, you sort of take one sort of path, 
like I said, there's a lot of people that, that are really good at both, but um, also a lot of people sort of take one or the other. Like when I was younger, I grew up at a skate park where there wasn't much street and there was just a lot of transition and big ramps. So I kind of just took to that part, whereas maybe it would have been different if I was at another skate park, but I kind of just loved going down the big ramps and stuff too. Um, and I think maybe that is like similar for a lot of kids, kind of where you grow up or like what skate park you're around kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know, it's really just what you kind of take to when you're younger or when you first start skating and, and what you have more fun doing, I think. Because it seems there's a lot more freedom and creativity in park than there is street. Is, is that maybe one way of looking at it? Uh, there's, there's definitely just as much creativity in both, I think. Um, street is a lot of like flip tricks with your board um, and kind of like you, a lot of the time you don't necessarily even need a skate park to skate street. Like it's like stairs, railings, ledges, all that stuff. And you can be just, just as creative in street. Uh, you, it's kind of like the same judging sort of thing and you you figure out you're figuring out the park and using different obstacles like how you would use them and it's still really creative in that sense and then there's park too which is just the same but they're both very different I think yeah are you as a skater do you sort of walk down the street and just look at things where you think oh that would be really cool to do a trick on or I could do that I could do there like it's just constantly the, the skater's mind's always working when you don't have a board with you yeah, pretty much. Like whenever I'm driving, I'm like looking out the window and if I see something that looks like you could skate it, you know, it's always exciting. Like seeing like spots in the, in the street or stuff. Half of them I'm like, oh, wow, you could do that. But I could actually <laughs> never do it because I suck at skating straight. But it's, it's really fun just like finding things that you can skate outside of the skate park. Which I can imagine you've always got a board with you anyway. That's probably a dumb thing to say you don't have a board. It's probably always in the back of the car ready to go, right? Just in case. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's always in the back of my car. <laughs> Just ready ready to go with that. In terms of sort of off-board training, is there, like, what does a skater do? Gym, you know, cardio, are, are there much elements outside of the skating? Like, what are you needing to work on to really kind of help you pull off those tricks and, uh, you know, really perform to your best in a competition? Uh, so this part is very new to skating, I think. Um, when there was like, I guess, like bigger competitions before, like even the competitions I would go to before, you wouldn't really do any of that stuff. I guess skating is your fitness and stuff. Like a lot of people would stretch, but now since the Olympics and since it's there's like this, it's on this big scale, a lot has come into it. There's gym. Um, there's all this like gym stuff that I do. And then there's even gymnastics for probably more for park and, and spinning and that kind of stuff. Um, and then, yeah, definitely more stretching and stuff like that. But I guess like even probably outside of competitions, um, stretching is just, really good to do in general but I, I even like I'm bad at it a lot of the time I just get to the skate park and I don't want to like warm up I just want to start skating just get but, into it which when you're talking about gym work like what sort of exercises is doing is it more you know strength training like kind of cardio like what sort of are you focusing on it's a it's a bit of everything I think it would be different for street skaters um it, it, or I guess it, w it would be a bit similar, but with street skating, I, I feel like it'd be a bit more ankle mobility and stuff or ankle strength, but it's definitely like in skating, I guess your legs are, you're doing all the, the leg workouts you kind of need, but it's sort of like weights and things, a um, bit, of, bit of cardio, but kind of just getting stronger in your body and for, a run in a skateboarding competition is 45 seconds and it's, it doesn't seem long at all, but when you're out there, especially like 
I guess I like to try and go as fast as I can. So when you're pumping in a bowl and you're trying to go fast, it takes it out of you by the end. So definitely want to get some cardio. Um, but there's, lo- there's lots of things, always working on different stuff. And, and the mental side of it too, that, that preparation where you're on top of that board, getting ready to go into the bowl, pumping yourself up for those 45 seconds. Like what sort of mental training do you do? And do you work with sports psychologists and things like that in skateboarding? Yeah, so I've worked with um, Lydia Lassia a bit and Lane Beachley um, just for like different things. Um, And it's really cool like hearing from those guys who don't have much fear at all. (laughs) I feel like they're just so good at managing it. Um, But skateboarding definitely is 90% mental, especially... For me, it's kind of like a lot of the time your body can do the tricks, but it's just getting over the fear of like trying to do it. Um, so I've kind of, I've worked with those guys a little bit, um, had some sports psychologists, but really I think like the main thing that helps is um, being at a session with your friends and everyone kind of like feeding off each other and getting hyped off each other. I think that definitely helps me the most is when I'm with my mates and they're like telling me, I don't know, that I can do it <laughs> or stop being a bitch or I don't know. <laughs> Just get out there. Which I'm glad you mentioned the, the Lane Beach. I mean, fascinating to hear that you work with Lydia, but uh, the, the Sports Hall of Fame scholarship that you get to work with Lane, which, I mean, an absolute icon of, of surfing, of course. I mean, what's our first meeting like sitting down with, Lane Beachley going, what's up, what's up, Lane, how you doing? Yeah, a bit of help would be nice. What can you, what can you help me here with? Uh, yeah, she's awesome. I, I love her. I guess I can't even remember the first time we met. I think it was probably over the phone because we would just call a lot of the time just to chat about stuff. Um, and, yeah, she, she's really cool. I actually saw her the other day in Sydney we had to do like a shoot together for something and then we just we ended up hanging out and catching up for a bit and I remember we went surfing and it was it was like I love surfing but I'm not very good (laughs) um so we went out and the waves are like really big and it's just like a chill day for Lane (laughs) <laughs> and I remember her just like kind of giving me all this, all this advice to not be scared of the waves and stuff and like talking about retraining your brain and all this stuff. So she's, she's just amazing. Like she's always giving me kind of advice. I think. Incredible. Wow. Do you get her on the skateboard? Have you given her a try at that? She actually took my skateboard that day, but we're on tiles. So she like, she fell off, but she can, she can do it. I feel like she's, there's not much. She doesn't have much fear, so she'll try. And- yeah, absolutely insane. Incredible. I mentioned the X Games. Now, take us through an X Games experience because obviously now you've got the Olympics in skateboarding. But, I mean, for a large portion of time, the X Games was the peak of skateboarding, right? This is where you want to go to. I mean, what's that experience like being the first, as I said, uh, female at a summer uh, X Games for Australia? And then ultimately, bronze medalist, 2017. Uh, pretty pretty good experience, that one, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um- yeah, for a while, like, um, for competition skating or competition skaters, X Games was, like, the peak and, the like, what you wanted to go to. Um, so, definitely, my first X Games, it, it's so surreal. I, I remember when all the girls went together, it was just, like, this incredible feeling. It, it, it was what the Olympics kind of felt like, but before, it's just this competition, but on this, like, crazy scale um and there's all these other extreme action sports like happening next to you like you got you know motorbikes and a mega ramp and we had to qualify as well to get into x games so that made it um even harder and even more exciting going there so it was it was definitely an amazing event and then getting third was just like so surreal i didn't expect that at all that was one of the craziest, best feelings ever. And they're really cool medals, X Games medals, aren't they too? Like we like to talk about uh, our guests on the show win Olympic medals, but I, I, I love seeing the X Games medals. They're pretty amazing looking medals. Yeah. Uh, every, every time they're so cool. 
and they're usually on really cool chains and they're yeah they're sick it was cool it was a really awesome feeling to come back with a, a medal <laughs> do you remember when you first heard that skateboarding was being added to the olympics in 2020 and, and what that feeling was like and does that change much does that all of a sudden think to yourself like holy shit i could become an olympian now yeah i think so I, there was there was a little bit of talk about it before but then i remember when it happened it was it felt like very all of a sudden and i was like 16 i think at home and people started posting about it on instagram and like my first initial thoughts were like oh my gosh like if i try this i'm gonna become like a proper athlete and get really fit and like i don't know that's what i was thinking but it's it's been a really cool process and it's kind of, I think everyone knew how crazy this competition was going to be and everyone kind of had their own ideas about it. But going and skating there with all the girls, um, it was it was so incredible. But at the same time, it was just like any other competition. Like you get the nerves like you do about anything else. But you're still just like skating with your friends and having a good time and pushing yourself. So it was a really awesome experience. Was there any backlash from the skating community? Because I know with breaking about to be added to Paris, there has been that mixed reaction that some people think it will take away that creative freedom of the sport and that culture and that it's going to turn it into an Olympic sport with a different, you know, level there. But was there much sort of people in the skating community thought it could have been a bad thing for the sport? Yeah, definitely. It was, it was very, very mixed. Um, I, I kind of grew up, going straight into comp um competitive skating and and sort of thinking that was the only i guess way um you could skate or i don't know you could make a living out of skateboarding but then i sort of grew up a bit and realized there's, there's so many other outlets and things you can do to express yourself creatively in skateboarding you know whether there's a whole another side which is more like filming based and and companies you know, film you for videos and things like that. So it kind of like really opened my eyes creatively. So I think seeing all that, I kind of got a, um, a better understanding of, I guess there's a lot of people that thought by doing this, it was going to kind of take away that creative side and, and skateboarding is kind of no rules and it is such a freeing thing to do. Um, and it, I guess it can be whatever you want it to be. It can, it can be a sport. It can be an outlet. It can just, some people think of it as an art form. So there was definitely um, backlash and people questioning it. But I think you kind of just got to go back to like, I guess, why you started skateboarding in the first place. And if you're doing it for like whatever reason you, you want to do it and you're having a good time. I don't think you need to let other people or things uh, affect you, I guess. The, the only part for me that was a bit daunting is that if like other countries were going to sort of bring up little kids and, and push them more that weren't into skateboarding, like in the first place, I guess that was the part that was a bit, scary for me <laughs> kind of create that sort of yeah machine aspect of it of yeah. raising them in, in that that environment which you know obviously can can happen with that but i think a lot of people obviously compared it to say when snowboarding was added to the olympics in 1998 and i think the thing that we're seeing with snowboarding over the years is that growth in the olympics is that yeah it's got this olympic level of competition but it always just still seems like the snowboarders are, are out there having fun that that you know fun nature of the sport and everything along those lines and that culture and, and freedom that it, it doesn't really from an outsider's perspective at least seem to have really damaged that uh, image of snowboarding so hopefully that will be the same with skateboarding yeah i think i i talked to a lot of people after and there was there was actually a lot of people that liked watching the women's park more than any of the skating events which was really cool because i think we we we're all so nervous but um i think especially when the the group of girls made the finals they were like oh my gosh like we we're all kind of had this sense of like w we did it and it was it was so fun like we we're all just like hyping each other up and feeding 
off each other's energy and everyone was so excited to be there. And I think when we, um, when our friend Misugu who got fourth, when she fell off and we lifted her up, I think that was pretty cool for people to see it. Even people like outside of skateboarding being like, Oh, you can like, you can have a sport in the Olympics, but everyone's like good mates and having fun together. So I think that was pretty cool for people. Yeah. Though I was going to mention that, that that was the unique aspect of it was that I don't think I'd ever seen a sport in the Olympics where everybody was just celebrating everyone. Like you've got an intense Olympic final with eight of you basically all fighting for Olympic medals, but it didn't matter where you finished. You were all celebrating each other like, you know, you'd all won the goal, which again, I don't think I've ever seen that in Olympic Games in my life. Yeah, uh, that was that was a really kind of amazing moment for all of us, I think, because me and all the girls that have been skating in the finals and pretty much most of the girls in the event, we'd all grown up skating together for like the last five to 10 years. So we're all like good mates. And then to finally like get to that stage was amazing. You know, what was that moment like for you when you had qualified for the Olympics and had you qualified before the delay or had you had to wait till after the delay to secure your spot? I, I qualified a little bit before, so I kind of like knew, I, I kind of had a like good feeling like before, but when it's like finally confirmed, it, it was awesome. It was an awesome feeling. Yeah. It must be that amazing realization of going back to when you find out that it's going to be an Olympic sport to all of a sudden this is happening. And do you have a moment where, you pinch yourself and go, I'm an Olympian. Like, is it when you get that qualification confirmed, when you get the uniform, when you're, you're on top of the, the bowl ready to compete? Like, is there a moment it hits you? I think uh, probably the biggest moment. Oh, I think there's, there's a couple, like it pops up in different like phases and waves. I think when definitely getting there for the first time and like, um, getting to Japan and getting to the village and like meeting everyone and having all the skaters there definitely felt it a bit. And then after the competition, for sure, like when all the girls just hugged and we're all skating, like after we finished skating, that was definitely a realization for sure that it had all finished kind of thing. We always love hearing about the Olympic experiences, but I'd be fascinated to learn, like, new kid on the block, literally, yourself and the entire sport itself. Like, what's the reaction like from other sports? Because X Games, you're obviously around similar athletes from sort of those extreme sports, but I can't imagine there are many modern pentathletes and handball players and swimmers who are often going to these multi-sport events and bumping in skateboards. Like, what? how are they sort of treating you? Are they welcoming? Are they like, you know, we're looking forward to seeing how the sport's going to go? Yeah, I think everyone that I met was pretty welcoming. Uh, like all, all the Australian team and our whole building was really cool. I met a lot of um, athletes that were super nice and like knew who I was and were chatting to me. Everyone was really super friendly. It was, yeah, it was a super cool experience. Was, it, was there anyone that came up to you who knew who you were that surprised you? Did you have like one of the Campbell sisters or somebody like that? We were like, holy crap, I, I know who know, I am. <laughs> yeah, I, I talked to the Campbell sisters and I'd never met them before. So that was, that was really exciting for me um, just because I'd grown up watching swimming. And so I was talking to them and, and that was super cool. Got a picture with them. And then um, I was talking to Bronte and she said, she just like slid into the conversation that she like, watched my documentary wow and it was like oh, <laughs> what i'd like to go back to that <laughs> so, give me a moment there i need to process that okay yeah, yeah. so Fantastic. we were both kind of like hyped off each other which was which was so cool just met like so many amazing people which how was that to have that documentary in the lead up to that? Because it's great exposure to yourself, but to the sport and to get people amped up for it. I mean, sort of what was that whole experience like being the, the face of a, of a film like this? I was crazy when, once the film actually finished. I think me and Justine, the director, we'd been filming for ages, like probably like eight, <laughs> over eight years, just like, and different parts of my life and so when it finally there was like definitely stages where I was like is this ever gonna like be finished or is anything gonna be done with it because it went for so long but I think when it finally got finished 
it was it was super cool it's a, it, it's also like a crazy interesting feeling and watching like a big part of your life like on a screen with other people was really weird but it's like it's it's super cool and I think something that when I'm older you know I'll, yeah. I'll definitely appreciate it more yeah for sure absolutely kind of always got that record going on there in terms of that yeah. Olympic experience as well do you get involved in things like pin trading and kind of like uniform exchanging and things like that as well throughout the Olympics yeah I, I actually had no idea about the the pin trading and then I remember having like a, uh, some pins in my room and uh, David Guesty, who's a hockey player who was looking after us, kind of told me what they were for. And I just like freaked out. I was like, oh my God, I got to like get all these pins. What a cool idea. And so I, yeah, I, I had a girl from India give me my first pin and it was this really cute little Indian one. And then after that, I just like went on a rampage. I, I got so many. Fantastic. Which I was going to ask, is that at the X Games? But obviously maybe it's not an X Games thing that they do pin trading. No, no. It should be though. It was just, uh, yeah. just at the Olympics. But yeah. Yeah. There you go. Which, I mean, I love kind of hearing that, how it works. Because obviously it was a very unique Olympics Tokyo kind of just with how it goes. But I still love that they kept that pin trading because people always talk about it. it's the unofficial sport of the Olympics, right? The, the pin trading, pin collecting. Do you, then, do you have like people reach out to you on social media and be like, hi, I'm John, a pin trader from Belarus. I would love to like get your Olympic pins. Cause I can imagine that there are these traders out there who are going to reach out to anybody they can to try and get some of these rare pins. Yeah. I think it was, it was pretty chill when, when I went. Um, but I think as I, as I got more into it, people would like come up and ask if I had a pin and I had, I had to get more pins from <laughs> the Australian building because I like would just run out of all of them. <laughs> My whole lanyard is like double sided, just like pinned up. <laughs> so that was, do they, do they get, do they give you a limit though? Like, is it like Poppy, you've been here five times now. Come on now. No more pins for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they, uh, I don't know. They were, they were pretty cool with it. I think you, you get a decent amount, amount of pins in your first one, but you kind of just kind of got a couple more from some people. So. <laughs> one, one thing that I would like to know, like we've talked about the freedom and the expression from skaters when it comes to getting that Olympic uniform, obviously because it's a, such a big competition, you know, you were in the green and gold. Are you allowed to sort of talk to the uniform suppliers and be like, as skaters, we like it a bit baggy or like we like this or like that. Is there any input that the skaters can have in the skating uniform for the Olympics? Yeah, I think it was talked about a lot, like lots of months prior to the Olympics because it is such a big thing. And, you know, when, when I guess your uniform counts as your equipment, then you can just like wear whatever you want. So it's, uh, pants and skating is like a huge part of it. So with the Australian team, we just got to wear our skating pants, whether they were like, they to be like black or green or something. Um, so yeah, that was definitely talked about before, but I think it was different for other countries like America. They had pants for skating and stuff, but I, I liked how our setup was, you know, you can wear your own pants and your shoes, but, and you just pick between like a variety of a bunch of different t-shirts. So that was cool. Kind of works out that way with that. Did you set yourself a goal going into competition I'm coming away with a medal, make the final sort of like, what was your mindset going into the competition part of the Olympics? Um, I think my goal, my goal is to, to get there. And then I basically, I think just really wanted to make the finals. And that was sort of like where my bar was set. And then like anything after that was a bonus. Um, so to, to make it to the finals is amazing. And then to make fifth was even better. So I was just like, from, from the finals, I was just like happy with anything. I think I was just like trying my best. And then that's kind of all you can do pretty much. Yeah. I, lo I love hearing that because going back to that point about how close everybody was in that final and just the, the spirit and everything with that, because you're a history maker. You're, you're part of that very first Olympic final. You, you finish fifth, which is absolutely incredible. And then you get to celebrate with 
friends and all these girls that, as you said, you've been competing with for for a while. So, I mean, even though ultimately you didn't come away with a medal, you sound like you're equally as satisfied the fact that you kind of had that experience. Yeah, for sure. I mean, just get getting to go to the Olympics is a win in itself, and then anything else is is amazing. And the the finals is like kind of was was my main goal, and then yeah. Because I was up against like the the best skaters, even though they're all my friends, it was such a hard competition. And I think for me, going into a competition, that's sort of to have fun, but also like push myself and try and do my very best best at the same time. I think because it's it's that level of exposure that we've talked about, and just the the reaction it was getting here in Australia through yourself, and then the finals, and obviously with Keegan then winning the gold as well, obviously added to that afterwards. But just the level of, of everything that it came away from it. I mean, here on the show, we were sort of thinking like, well, what's this going to be like? What's skateboarding going to be like at the Olympics? And then you kind of get this eye on it, which I can imagine you then take that. You've had that experience in the back of your mind now. Is it then a simple case of, I'm going to keep pushing Paris. Here we come. Like, you know, I've gotten that experience and uh, let's keep going. I can, I can go better than fifth next time around. Yeah, pretty. I think that, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I think Paris would be so cool to go to and, and get into that. And then my first goal is always like to make the finals, I think. Um, and then we'll just k- kind of keep pushing from there. I mean, everyone's going to have progressed so much. So it's, it's definitely going to be a tricky one. But, yeah, I think just keep pushing, have fun along the way and, and see if I can do my best and – hopefully get a, a bit better but we'll see <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely see obviously again paris is is on the mind right now but i mean in 10 years time poppy we've got a home olympics in brisbane i know it's a little bit far to, to look ahead but i mean that must be tempting uh, it must be sort of you look at something like that when you've got that and you're still young like i mean you know you're what only going to be like early 30s and still you're, you're still a spring chicken poppy so i think kind <laughs> of uh there's possibility but is that like tempting do you look that far ahead Ah, uh, I haven't, I haven't even started thinking about that one yet, but it would be really, really cool to go to an Olympics in Australia. So I think I just have to do the next one and then kind of see, see how it's going. Just keep on pushing. Because if, if, if my calculations are correct, I think you were about three months old when Sydney happened. So to, to really make me feel old on this show today. So uh, you obviously wouldn't have any memory, I would assume, of the Sydney Olympics to see how that was like in Australia. But, I mean, it's obviously going to be a very exciting time in Australia over the next 10 years when it when it comes to that as well. But do, do you sort of then, do you set yourself goals just on the competition side of things? You've got the bronze at the next games. Do you look forward to like, I want to push towards a gold? Is that something you do? Or is that sort of not something you really do in skateboard? and it's just again back to that creativity and sort of seeing how things go along the way I think definitely um you I mean you always have a a medal in in the back of your head I think even just like with other competitions in skating um but for me I've always been like more like I guess like I want to have fun but also kind of challenge myself at the same time and whatever happens happens but just kind of push myself to do the best that I can do and then what wherever that takes me is yeah what's gonna happen exactly (laughs) Exactly. what happens happens with that poppy we'll we'll close out with a set of uh get to know yourself questions in just a moment but just two quick things I want to touch on during COVID I believe you built a skate ramp in your bedroom which uh most kids dream can we just point that out do you keep it in the room after the olympics because i can't imagine once you've got a skate ramp in your bedroom you ever want to get rid of it yeah um i actually i did get rid of it because we moved um houses but yeah when when covid happened and all the skate parks were shut down i i put it in my room because i was i was just in the garage so i had enough space and so i had that for a bit which was which was really fun um to, to skate when you didn't really have any skate parks. So that was really cool. And then I think I, I went overseas for like months and months to get ready for the Olympics and stuff. And my brother who has really bad ADHD was just kind of going crazy. And he's like, can I sell the ramp? I want to change the rooms around. Like he's always changing, changing everything. Um, so I was like, yeah, fine. 
So <laughs> he sold it and he moved all our rooms around. Damn. So that's wow. our one. It's yeah. all right. State parks are open. Yeah, well, that's that's the positive there, right? Of course, now that they're open. The other aspect I mentioned in the introduction, you're now an author. The uh, the colourful world of Poppy Star Olsen, uh, out and about and ready to uh, buy for people out there. Tell us about this experience and sort of how this came about and and how have you found uh, author life essentially now? Yeah, so I'm actually I mainly um, illustrated it. It's uh, this book. It's the main author is Jess Black, who's a, a kids author from um, Newcastle. And then I was the illustrator for this book called The Colourful Life of Poppy Star Olsen. And it's, it's based on kind of my life as, an, uh, as a, like a 12-year-old and, and what I would get up to living in Bondi, whether it was like skating, surfing, drawing, all that stuff. Um, and so, yeah, Jess wrote it and then I came in and like, helped with all the like skating stuff and it was this cool little um, collab, but that was definitely a dream come through. I've always wanted to illustrate a book like since I, since I was a kid. So I never like actually knew that was going to happen. So it was a really fun process. And I also um, rolled my ankle and tore a couple of ligaments. Um, so I, I had surgery right before it happened. So I was pretty much bedridden. So, which was actually the perfect time to get injured if there ever was one, because I don't know if I would have got all the drawings done if I wasn't injured and ha- yeah. like was forced to sit in my bed. <laughs> I was going to say, if, if there's a perfect time to get injured, that that's when it then it is. So, was this sort of something that like Jess approaches you? Had you sort of always had this in the back of your mind that you would like to do this, and you just found somebody to collaborate with? No, uh, Penguin actually reached out to me um sort of after the olympics when i was in quarantine um like hotel quarantine so that was kind of a booster great while you know quarantining so that was really cool and then yeah and then we kind of like found found jess and then we started talking and collabing and yeah and then the book came to life pretty much kind of goes that way as well and, how, and sort of the reaction to it the reception obviously at the time of recording this it's been out just uh very freshly released i believe so kind of like are you getting a lot of positive feedback and we're we gonna have sequels is this gonna be like a book series now moving forward you had 12 year old poppy now we're gonna go to 15 year old poppy and kind of i don't know going through this like, the new harry potter basically it sounds like it could be yeah. i know i've i've thought about that i was like wow it'd be it'd be awesome if if it, it did really well because I'd love to illustrate another one now that I've got the swing of things. Um, so yeah, so far, like all, all my friends in America who pre-ordered it and like my friends from around the world are all kind of just starting to get theirs now or like over the last couple of weeks. So that's really cool seeing everyone getting their books and, you know, I feel like uh, most of my friends that are getting them are, are my age or older. So it's funny them like, reading a kid's book but it's it's so cool i went and looked at them in some bookstores and in newcastle and, it, and it's pretty surreal but that must yeah. be the cool feeling when you see it on the shelf and then there it is you're like wow that, that, it's, yeah. it's a real thing right now yeah it, it was super cool and i went and kind of signed some books um for a bookstore here so that Great. was pretty cool. fantastic. yeah fantastic which you've ticked off movies you've ticked off books I mean, I mentioned Tony Hawk Pro Skater video game before. Are we going to get the Poppy Star Olsen Pro Skater like for PlayStation 5 or something like that? You know, like, I mean, that, that, there's your next one maybe you could do. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, we'll, we'll see. That, that would be pretty funny. Maybe I'll aim for a, a character in one of those first. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. That would, that would yeah. definitely ramp it up there as well. So do you, do you like try to challenge your mates on like video games and like does, can you translate the Olympic skills into video game skills on, uh, on skateboarding games? I suck at video games. I've like never been good. My brother's really good. Um, but yeah, I've, I like never really had any skateboarding video games or kind of video games growing up. I think I was just always out skating or at, at the beach or something. Um, so yeah, I'm not a, a good one to talk about that because even if I ever did play video games, I wouldn't be very good. <laughs> so, so what you're saying here, Poppy, if I ever want to beat you in skateboarding, it's on a PlayStation, basically. That's yeah. 
that's where we're at. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I take that challenge on board and I'll remember that just in case, you know, we just bump into each other. Oh, hi, Poppy. Hey, I've got a PlayStation here. Do you want to play? Um, you know, and then you can kick my ass on the actual board because I would fall over quicker than you can say your name. Uh, Poppy, we like to wrap up every episode with a set of fun, get to know you style questions. And the one thing I'm actually intrigued with now, obviously as somebody who's quite talented in the drawing side of things, we always put the our idea out there it's completely optional but as part of this questionnaire there is a drawing element this was a questionnaire that team canada gave their athletes ahead of pyeongchang and rio and on this questionnaire they asked them to draw a picture of themselves draw a picture of your favorite animal uh, and draw a picture of one of your teammates now completely optional it's not compulsory but if you're today you're sitting around you're like ah, that interview was somewhat okay I, I kind of like that idea of drawing feel free to Draw those and send it in and we can share it on social media. So entirely up to you if you feel the need to, Poppy. Cool. Yeah, that sounds awesome. There you go. Just start uh, putting it out there. But we'll get into these questions. I'll start off with your favourite ever Olympic moment is. Mm. Favourite ever Olympic moment. Hmm. You're allowed to answer your own, of course. Yeah, I was going to or... say, I think the most memorable one was going to the Olympics and, and you know, after after me and all the girls competed, I think lifting, we all hugged and it was just the craziest moment and then lifting Masugo up, that was like, that's that was the highlight for me. I don't think anything else can, can do yeah. so far. No. Great answer. Great answer. <laughs> if you could have any superpower, what would it be? I think about this one a lot. I think it would probably be to fly. Mm -hmm. Good answer. I like it. Which would help in skateboarding, I could imagine. You could get some I, good air time. And <laughs> I know. I, I think about that sometimes. I'm like, but sh I like, would want to turn it off because I wouldn't want to be cheating. Well, true, yeah. true. There could be a middle ground there, right, where you can maybe just use it slightly. Like I'm sure Superman yeah. can just use a bit of flight yeah. uh, when he does but it. So Anything else yeah. would be so cool. Could just yeah. like, whip over and, and skate. Exactly, exactly. That, that would be fun. Um, your favourite sports movie is... Favorite sports movie? Hmm. Um, is Cool Runnings the one about the Jamaican bobsled team? It definitely is. Yes. Yeah, I think that one. <laughs> I love that movie. Great answer. Definitely, we love yeah. it. There, I mean, there's some pretty mainly documentaries. Is there actually like skateboarding movie movie? Like a you know a Hollywood film about skateboarding or? Oh, there's probably some. <sighs> pretty questionable ones out there. No. <laughs> I haven't seen too many, but I think there's some funny ones. Um, for yeah. sure. I'm trying to think there's an obvious, I feel there's an obvious one that uh, I'm not thinking of that exists. I think there's like a Dogtown Z Boys one. That mm. was like the actual, actual movie, but I'm blanking on what's it, what it's called. I think the Z Boys or something. I don't know. Yeah. I, I definitely remember there's happens. great documentaries out there. So I remember my sister used to watch a bunch of them and always used to kind of be intrigued with those. Uh, your funniest childhood memory is. Hmm. There's so many. <laughs> I think I just, Too uh, many to choose from. There's actually so many. Um, I'll just pick a random uh, I think we would always, as kids, we'd, and when we'd go into the country and visit my grandma, we'd all, like, um, put our helmets on and ride around this, like, empty school when it was magpie season. And <laughs> that, was, that was super fun. And my little sister was, like, four one time, and it was swooping her, and she was screaming, and she just, like, completely fell off her bike. I feel wow. like she was just, like, been out of all of us she just gets destroyed by the maggies and the last time like a couple years ago or a while ago actually in, when we we're in newcastle one swooped her and it was the funniest thing because she's like a character and she's pretty sassy and she was yelling at all of us and then a magpie came out of nowhere and swooped her. <laughs> and she was 
just made her angrier. And then she's like, you actually shouldn't laugh because I'm bleeding. And then we had blood everywhere. Wow. It, was, it was really funny. <laughs> wow. Yes. No, that's, uh, that's something. And I'm sure a lot of uh, our Australian listeners will uh, be able to understand that with those devastating magpies <laughs> yeah. as they do that. Jeez. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, your favorite pump up song is? Oh, um, shoot. Prob- either something by ABBA or... Oh, nice. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's different every single time, but um, probably SOS by ABBA. Oh, um, good. So I like that. See, I think skateboarders, and I don't necessarily think ABBA, but I, I, I like that. That, <laughs> that actually really works well. Yeah, I think it's... With, with skating, you're going to get so many diverse music tastes. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, got to, I've got to ask a question with that, though, because on one of the videos I watched, you were giving a tour of your room and you had a picture of Madonna. Now, uh, great Madonna song, Hung Up, from an ABBA song. Have you ever used Hung Up as a pump-up song? Because that kind of mixes Madonna and ABBA. That would be a good song. Yeah. I there, Yeah, there's like a, a Hung Up one, I'm pretty sure. Are you talking about the... There's like ABBA and Madonna mixed into like yeah. a remix. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. So so well, ABBA, the the song hung up samples "Gimme Gimme Gimme" by ABBA. So it's got that yeah. sort of uh. So it's that like so yeah. So it's kind of yeah. like a combination. No, I love that song. That's definitely that's definitely one of my hype songs. Good to know. Uh, yeah. I like that. I'm I'm glad. I'm a massive Madonna fan, so I just need to you know put that in there. Uh, the most recent TV show you binge watched is. Um, my brother got me onto this one called Arcane. Okay. It's like, it's kind of like almost anime kind of futuristic, um, city, but then there's like this whole underground city as well. I don't know. It's, it's kind of confusing, but I've, I don't usually watch TV shows, but when I get into one, I got it and also love death robots is really cool too. Nice. Okay. I like, we always get some great recommendations when we ask this question. So it's good. Uh, Your least favorite foods are. I try so hard to eat oysters every time, but. (laughs) Can't do it. uh, Yeah. It's just like the taste or something makes me gag. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think oysters is the main one. Everything else I can eat. Like I always, I'll always try and eat every single type of food, but that one is. No go for oysters. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. If you weren't an athlete, what would you be? Uh, I'd love to be either an artist or an actor. Oh, nice. You could still be those, Poppy. Come on. Like, yeah. You know. You're already an artist and you've already been in a movie. It's just maybe not acting, but, yeah. you know. <laughs> you've got an IMDb page, I'm sure, so you're halfway there. So yeah. <laughs> that so counts. People want skating. Girls. Yeah, exactly. Sure. I mean, how many things has Tony Hawk been in? Come on, get, get rid of him. It's now Poppy's time to shine, you know. Go, <laughs> go away. Go away, Tony. Retire. Come on. So it's time for the new, the new people in town. Uh, your favourite vacation spot is... Um, mm, this one's so hard. Uh, are there, I went to Marseille, France once, and that Ooh, was nice. beautiful. But then I also love um, Bali and Italy. There's, there's, it's actually so hard. But my bucket list is definitely to go to to go to Greece. I think nice. Well, Greece, not too far away from Paris. So with that gold medal around your neck in a couple of years, yeah. time, probably that'd be your celebration <laughs> tour, perhaps going across there. Uh, what's something people usually describe you as? Describe me as? Hmm. I don't know. Shoot. Do we need to get a quick straw poll out there to people listening? Send us in. What do you describe Poppy as? <laughs> uh, um... I don't know. 
I'm a bit odd. <laughs> a bit. <laughs> Nothing wrong know, with that. that. That's, We're that's all what a bit my family odd. says anyway. So. Yeah, that counts. We'll, we'll put it down. That, that, <laughs> that works. Uh, if you could be an Olympian in any other sport besides your own, what would it be? I mean, I, I kind of answer this one to myself and I'm like, oh, rugby would be fun because I did it for a while. But then it'd also be crazy to be able to do something like pole vaulting or something. Oh, um, yes. Yes. Oh, that, that, that's one. I always wonder how pole vaulters, like you're in track and field and let's make it a little bit more difficult by getting a giant pole and running. Sure. Why not? Um, <laughs> I, I just want to even get into that. Exactly. Exactly. Oh. They just like jumping over things, but they want to do it with a stick. Um, yeah. <laughs> or know. some sort of snowboarding would be awesome too. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, I guess that wouldn't be quite the difficult transition to pole vaulting as, you know, skateboarding, snowboarding. I see the transition whereas <laughs> skateboarding, pole vaulting, a eh, little, little bit different there. Last one for you, Poppy. What is your guilty pleasure? I don't, I see, I don't have many guilty pleasures because I'm not, I don't feel guilty about doing much stuff. I'll just, just do, do it, it if it's embarrassing. Um, but I think, yeah, listening, like if I'm ever on the ox or, you know, playing music, I'll, I'll, I'll play ABBA and like 2000s bops and stuff and just like a lot of like questionable music, but gets me That's, high. You know, you know, it's actually really interesting where I live at the moment, there is a house that on a Saturday afternoon without fail will play ABBA's greatest hits. And you just, you, you look at your clock, it's like two o'clock, cool. And you hear it like uh, they're about three streets away, but they play it without fail every single Saturday afternoon. So they've got no show. I, I think more people need to crank out ABBA at two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, right? We'd all be happier, wouldn't we? Yeah, I have a uh, ABBA greatest hits CD in my car. That's the, the best type. There you go. I absolutely love that. Poppy, before we let you go, people want to follow your journey uh, between now and Paris. Where can they follow you? Plug the book, plug the documentary, plug everything right now so people can stay up to date with everything you've got going on out there. Yeah. Um, so Poppy Star is uh, my Insta, P-O-P-P-Y-S-T-A-R-R. Um, and that's, that's kind of the main thing I use. And then Facebook a little bit. Um, Tall Poppy is the name of that, my documentary. So you can um, look that up and find a couple of different places to watch it. I think it's actually on Apple TV now too, which is awesome. Um, and then you can pre-order my book or just order my book now um, on the link in my Instagram. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's simple. Well, <laughs> Poppy, it's it's been such a delight to be able to learn more about you and the sport of skateboarding. This is our very first skateboarder, so so interesting to get an insight and everything into the sport and your Olympic experiences. We're going to look forward to seeing you in Paris, LA, Brisbane, and beyond. And I, I really do look forward to uh, kicking your ass in skateboarding on the PlayStation. Yeah, sounds good. I'll, I'll see you then. <laughs> <laughs>